All right. So, Anna, why don't you remind me, when, when were you here at UAB? Do you remember the years? Uh, actually, I do. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I was at UAB starting in 1996, and I finished my dissertation in 2001, but I stayed on until uh, early 2002. And you also were a very prized teacher in the department. I remember that. Well, I and always enjoyed the teaching, yeah. I know. I know you were excellent, and I know you still are. Um, <laughs> But I do remember you teaching histology. Am I? Yeah. In fact, I think you sort of put that course back together yourself. It hadn't been. Well, not to say, but that's actually the that's actually the reason I got my job. The job I got at Westchester was a job for a histologist, not for an right. in zoologist. Yeah. yeah. So this is one of the advantages and something I've tried to do with many of my graduate students is to get them a course to actually teach while they're a doctoral student. Awesome. Were you here when we had a pet octopus in the lab? Yeah, I was here when we had yeah. a pet remember octopus. remember that? I think Mark Slattery, one of my first doctoral students, along with you, were, it's sort of uh, the parent. Uh, I know that Mark said when he walked into the lab, the, the octopus definitely recognized him. Oh yeah, the octopus would dangle one of its arms over, as soon as you removed the, right. the lid, it would well, dangle arms and would just sucker onto your hands. There is a wonderful movie, if you haven't seen it, called My Octopus. Yes, I have actually seen it multiple oh, times. Oh, it's fantastic. It is. Yeah, you realize how intelligent they are. and, and I've actually shown parts of that in Invert Zoo. Yeah, I should do that too. Um, tell, tell me a little bit more about what your life is like at the University of Westchester. And I designed two different courses, Invert Zoo, which we didn't have on the books. Uh -huh. And um, marine botany. So it's basically... Well, the main aspect is phycology, but we also look at cyanobacteria and we also look at the plants in the marine environment. Right. Do you take them to uh, Wallops Island? Is that your... Um, that actually, the um, I teach uh, inverts though, every summer on Wallops. Oh, you do? Um, okay, very yeah. good. So for our, for our listeners, tell our, our listeners what Wallops Island is all about. Um, so Pennsylvania obviously is a landlocked state, and yet all of our um, universities, um, the Pennsylvania State System of Higher Education universities are uh, affiliated with a field station in Virginia, and that is the, a field station on Wallops Island, Virginia. So um, I taught there again because you allowed me to teach there. Yes, one of the things that I have always done in inverts um, on Wallops since I became a faculty member is we design t-shirts every year. Oh, wonderful. Each student chooses their favorite uh, invertebrate mm -hmm. and then makes a large picture of that. I scan them all and signs it. Mm -hmm. I scan them all in and then arrange them. And then I usually design something for the back. And then we generally get those um, we get those t-shirts before the class is over mm -hmm. so we always have um, a picture with everybody including Very myself good. in their t-shirts and um so and they probably i probably end up showing up in the t-shirt years later on campus too i mean that's that's fun well i certainly always wear mine the next <laughs> year when i when i go teach so um, that's also always something that really encourages team spirit because yeah. Yeah. it you know gives them something other than just a grade yeah well it's art to take home and it's art too and i always found that there's a tight correlation between art and biology i see that in my students over and over uh in their ability to draw or uh write poetically Absolutely. or just do artistic things seems to be a tight correlation with biology, maybe because of the observation of nature. Um, I, I'm just curious what you're doing um, research wise at this point. So, so right now I'm, I'm working up some data that we collected from uh, Antarctica uh, that is looking at uh, the levels of magnesium calcite in different body components of different echinoderms because as you know, magnesium calcite is uh, 
what echinoderms are primarily made out of, their skeletons. And it's also very susceptible to ocean acidification, which is something that's resulting from climate change, as you know, as CO2 is produced from burning fossil fuels and absorbed by the world's oceans. And Antarctica is the canary in the coal mine because the colder the ocean, the more CO2 is yeah, absorbed. I speak on climate change across the country. And, uh, and that's really important to me now because having been to Antarctica and seen these dramatic changes, I wanna tell that story and bring it back home and say, this is what it means to you living in Pennsylvania, or this is what it means to you here in Alabama. You've always been really busy. <laughs> oh, that's that's my always nature. been a very impressive, you know, I, the way that you juggled having students working on campus and yet still being able to go to Antarctica and go and teach courses in the Bahamas and so forth. That's, I'm sure for a lot of your students, that must be a huge inspiration. Oh, I hope so. Yeah. Because it does give us uh, an understanding what all you can do in a job like academia. Well, one of the ways I measure success is the number of students who've gone on such as yourself to have successful careers in academia. And I think I now have six graduate students that have our tenure track faculty across the country. So. You allow and you afford your students to have a lot of opportunities while they are at UAB. And without that, I bet you a lot of them might not be where they are now. Well, that's sweet of you. That's certainly true for me. 